A very good afternoon. You're watching the Midday News on Rajya Sabha Television. My name is Ashwarya Kapoor. Let us start the news bulletin with the headlines. Prime Minister Modi conducts aerial survey of flood affected Kerala, announces a central assistance of 500 crore rupees to the state. Ex gratia of 2 lakh rupees to the families of those who have been killed also announced. NHAI asked to repair main national highways on priority. 324 deaths in Kerala due to rains, floods and landslides since the 29th of May. Rescue work on to save thousands marooned in their homes. Aluva and Chengannur among worst hit. Over 3 lakh people in relief camps. In Karnataka, army joins rescue operations in landslide hit Kodagu district. 11th World Hindi Conference begins in Mauritius. Dignitaries pay homage to former Indian Prime Minister Atal Bihari Vajpayee, lord his contribution in promoting the language. External Affairs Minister Sushma Swaraj stresses on making Hindi official language at the United Nations. Imran Khan sworn in as the Pakistan's new Prime Minister. Khan sworn in at ceremony held at President's House. Swearing in after he defeated Shahba Sharif in a one-sided election for the post in the National Assembly. And do or die match for India as they take on England in the third and the deciding test match of the five-match series in Nottingham. Slew of the changes in team expected after losses in the first two matches. Kerala floods continue to be our top story and Prime Minister Narendra Modi has announced a financial assistance of 500 crore rupees to the flood-ravaged state. The announcement came after the review meeting to take stock of the situation in the state with the Chief Minister Pinarai Vision and other state government officials. He also assured the state government that relief materials including food grains, medicines etc. would be provided as requested. He also announced an ex gratia of 2 lakh rupees per person to the next of the kin of the deceased and 50,000 rupees to those seriously injured from the Prime Minister's and National Relief Fund. He directed insurance companies to hold a special camps for the assessment and timely release of the compensation to the affected families or beneficiaries under the social security schemes. The directions have also been issued for early clearance of claims under the Fasal Bima Yojana to agriculturalists. Villagers whose uh, kacha houses have been destroyed in the devastating floods would be provided Pradhan Mantri Avas Yojana Grameen houses on priority irrespective of their priority in uh, the permanent wait list of uh, the PMAYG. Also, National Highways Authority of India has been directed to repair main national highways that have been damaged due to floods on priority. The central public sector like NTPC and PGCIL have also been directed to be available to render all possible assistance to the state government in restoring power lines as well. The Prime Minister earlier made an earlier survey of the flood hit state. So the situation in uh, flood hit uh, Kerala continues to be grim. The official death figure since the heavy rains uh, started uh, since the uh, 29th of May is now 324. The National Crisis Management Committee that uh, met for the second time on Friday has asked for the mobilization of additional resources to all the agencies that uh, were engaged in rescue and relief operations. Kerala's worst floods in a century 324 lives have been lost so far since heavy rains began on May 29th. The floods began nine days ago. May 29th, August 3rd to Mudal in the Ravale Varela Kanakadatal Nuti Aravati Nali Varana Medicine. 
Over 80,000 stranded people were rescued on Friday, 71,000 of them from the worst affected Alua region in Ernagulam. Over 2 lakh people are in relief camps. Focused attention is now being given to Chengannur. <coughs> All three branches of the armed forces have been mobilized. Initially, most of them were doing, they, they were in Idiki and all when initially the landslides came through and they were rescuing people from stranded areas, creating bridges and all. Now the work has shifted more towards rescue from marooned areas, using, from water bodies, using these boats and OBMs and using improvised material. Local fishermen are engaged in rescue mission with their boats okay. evacuating people from Alua, Kaladi, Pirimbavur, Muvatipura and Chalakudi. Several roads in the hill district of Idki, including the picturesque Munar, have been badly damaged from a string of landslides. Vayanad, among the worst hit by the floods, is cut off from the rest of Kerala. In view of a fresh spell of floods inundating other vast areas, we have deployed our forces over there in A7 districts. Those forces consist of 14 teams plus four teams were added to that recently. The 18 teams are there. They have been given the area of responsibility. These teams are engaged in basically rescue and evacuation works, medical first response, and they are tackling the situations arising out of landslides, building collapse, and also assisting the state administration distributing relief materials over there. By 4.30 in the morning, we were informed that uh, water was rising up uh, uh, like uh, like hell and we did not know what to do and then we were shifted to the uh, first floor. Then we could see that uh, uh, both sides of the uh, road, it was completely covered with water more than our height. The Indian Air Force is airlifting and shifting flooded victims to safer places. Defence forces and disaster response teams are busy putting up makeshift bridges and clearing roads. Medical aid is also being provided. Continuous air sorties are being undertaken and people keep coming. Additionally, we have more than 40 teams of divers along with rubberized Gemini boats in four districts of Kerala. We have from here, from Kochi here, we are mainly focusing on Ernakulam, Trichur, Patanandipta and Alipi districts. Kochi airport is shut till August 26th. The DGCA has asked all airlines to operate flights from Kodikod and Tiruvananthapuram. DGCA has also capped airfares to Kerala. So far, 80 dams have been opened to release water. The weatherman has forecast heavy rain and gusty winds in various parts of the state. Southern Railways has dispatched three special trains carrying water to the rain-ravaged state, where drinking water supply has been hit in many parts. Over one lakh water bottles would also be sent through other trains bound for the state as reports of drinking water shortage emerge. Bureau Report, Rajya Sabha TV. All right, uh, joining us on the phone line right now is uh, Mr. N.J. Nair, Senior Assistant Editor with the Hindu in Trivandrum. A very good afternoon, sir. Of course, sir, we've been uh, witnessing, you know, several he heroic stories uh, of how people are being rescued. They're uh, pregnant to uh, women being rescued, young children as old as few months being rescued. But the fact of the matter is the number of uh, thousands of uh, people who are still marooned and uh, they have not been able to get help. What is the situation uh, right now? 
now, especially, uh, and how how's the weather uh, right now there? Thank you, ma'am. In the first place, rescue and relief operations are in full swing. The Honorable Prime Minister himself had arrived here and he had an aerial survey. And when the state sought 2,000 crore as initial assistance, the central government has sanctioned 500 crores. Uh, the, whatever the state government, the central government agencies and the state government agencies are working in tandem to mitigate the worth of the people who have been marooned in houses, who have been housed in a few shelters, and also in various other places. But the main problem is the inclement weather. Rains are still persisting, and that is what is impeding the rescue and relief operations. But even then, a number of people are being airlifted, moved out in boats, for which we have we should be thankful to the central and central forces and the state police, the state agencies, as well as the local people who are getting involved, totally committedly working to abate the woes of the people who have been hit by the floods, which is quite unprecedented. Hmm. I think the major flood the state witness was in 1924, but but that was much what we are witnessing now is yes. much, much cheaper and much graver than what the, 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 that happened in 1924. Hmm. But the state, and as for the initial uh, preliminary estimates of the state government, hmm. the loss incurred has been estimated to be around 20,000 crore. My God. And yeah. the state had sought an initial assistance of 2,000 crore against which hmm. the center has given 500 crores, which should not be enough. But at the same time, sufficient forces have been given, more boats and aircraft, I think, will be first into service in a day by tomorrow. And with that, the things are bound to improve. A number of people have been rescued. Twelve people lost their lives today itself. This includes one, uh, uh, an infant, as well as one person who was involved in the rescue and relief operations. Right. The, the state government is doing its very best to see that uh, uh, the rescue operations are reaching to the, uh, I mean, uh, the remotest tent. Hmm. The places like Wayanad remains totally cut off from the mainland. Idki is one district which has been badly hit by the floods. Patanabeta is yet another, Kotayam is yet another, Trishur and Ernakulam partially are hmm. seriously affected. Haluwa in Ernakulam is one place that remains seriously affected by the floods. People so, remain, uh, continue to remain caught up in uh, uh, mosques and other private places, even in their residences. But uh, reaching there is not an easy task, but still, therefore, the army and other state government agencies are contributing their might to ensure that those affected by the flood are getting the very best of their services. Right. Uh, sir, when we had spoken to you in the morning, uh, you were telling us about the situation in the relief camps and the fact of the matter is that now, uh, since uh, so much rescue work is going on, uh, obviously uh, a lot of these uh, people who have been now rescued from, uh, you know, marooned areas, uh, they would be shifted to the relief camps. So we would like to know from you, what is the situation in the relief camps at the moment? Obviously, they'd be overflowing with people. Uh, so how are the people managing with the basic things, uh, you know, drink, drinking water, food? Uh, how are people managing with that? That is one thing. See, drinking water has already been... Drinking water supply has been affected in six districts across the state. One most important thing is that 4,000 power transformers have been switched off, so pumping is badly affected. Uh -huh. That has to be resumed, which is not an easy task. Uh -huh. That means the government will have to think of other... Already railways have, have started uh, cutting drinking water from other states, but yes. that is not sufficient. Hmm. More quantities of drinking water will have to be provided in these places right. because resuming pumping is not an easy task, which hmm. means power, unless the power supply is resumed, drinking water supply, drinking water pumping won't be possible. Hmm. The plants are all remaining inundated, hmm. which means we will have to depend on other states or other sources hmm. for getting sufficient quanti quantity of drinking water. Hmm. And I think the state administration is well aware of that reality. Hmm. It has woken up to that and hmm. they have started doing such things. Moreover, hmm. A lot of people are coming forward with uh, food, food supply, drinking water supply and all. Mm -hmm. That is flowing in abundance. But still, mm -hmm. considering the scale of the tragedy that has hit the state, yes. all these won't be that sufficient as what we think. And that has to be scaled up further and further, no doubt. And the central and state government agencies, I think, are right. trying their level best to mm -hmm. ensure that those affect, uh, affected are getting the best of services, including medicines. Yes. So indeed, uh, the... the Tragedy is so mammoth, it's humongous. Of course, uh, relief and rescue operations are going on in full swing. Uh, but considering the, 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 the enormity of this uh, tragedy that has happened in Kerala, of course, uh, things are going to continue for a lot many days and it is going to leave a lasting impact on the state. And uh, those were the visuals uh, that uh, uh, we saw earlier. Prime Minister Modi surveying uh, 
flood hit the state of Kerala and he has uh, granted 500 crore rupees as emergency aid. And continuing uh, with the weather situation in other states, uh, in Odisha, at least uh, seven people have died in rain-related incidents in three districts of the state during the recent rains. As per the Met Department, uh, rain and thunder showers uh, will be experienced in some places today as well, while heavy rainfall is likely to occur tomorrow as well. And in the state of Karnataka, the army has joined operations to rescue people who've been stranded due to floods and landslides in the rain-battered uh, Kodagu district. 873 people have already been rescued and are brought to safety. Torrential rains, which lashed the state since 14th of August, caused landslides and disrupted normal life in the state. I am constructing my house there nearby uh, my neighbor Mohan Kumar. Uh, from past uh, eight months I am constructing. Now it is in finishing stage. But all of a sudden the flood came. We don't know what to do. There are a lot of things left in the house, uh, like materials, sand, cements, and no, uh, we are in no way to uh, lift the uh, things. And in Tamil Nadu, the flood uh, alert has been sounded in Thani and Madurai districts. Uh, people living along the banks of Kaveri and Bhavani have uh, been advised to move to safer places. Over 2 lakh cusecs of water is discharged from three dams of the state. Over 8,000 people have uh, been sheltered in relief camps in the state of Tamil Nadu in the view of heavy inflow from Karnataka reservoirs. And also heavy rains lashed to many parts of Gujarat as well, including Saurash to north and south of uh, Gujarat. Rain deficit district of Kutch also received good rains. According to the Met Department, the cyclonic circulation system has been created over the state of Gujarat. Therefore, heavy rain is expected uh, for the next three days as well. And heavy rains also lashed Chandigarh and its surrounding areas on Friday, providing relief to the people from sultry weather conditions. Chandigarh's adjoining towns Mohali in Punjab and Panchkula in Haryana were also lashed by heavy showers. According to the Met Department, uh, more rain has been forecast at many places in these two states as well. On to some other news now. The 11th World Hindi Conference began in Mauritius today. The Prime Minister of Mauritius inaugurated the conference in Port Louis. The dignitaries paid a tribute to former Prime Minister Atal Bihari Vajpayee at the conference and lauded his contribution in promoting the Hindi language. External Affairs Minister Sushma Swaraj in her address at the conference stressed on making Hindi the official language at the United Nations. Hindi world and Indian culture is the theme of the conference. For the first time, representatives from all the 29 states and union territories uh, are attending the conference. The delegates from India and various countries of the world are deliberating on eight subtopics on Hindi world and Indian culture during the three-day conference. World Hindi Conference was started in 1975 to make Hindi language a medium of service and knowledge and to enable it to move forward with time. Since then, Hindi has made remarkable progress and it has become one of the prominent languages of the world. I can't speak इस भाषा के प्रति मेरा प्रेम समझना। We would like Sri Vajpayee's name and legacy to endure in Mauritius. Ladies and gentlemen, I am honoured to inform you that the cyber tower which he contributed to set up in Mauritius will henceforth be named as the Atal Bihari Vajpayee Tower. जहाँ तक संयुक्त राष्ट्र में हिंदी को अधिकृत भाषा बनाने का संबंध है, कुछ बाधाएं उसमें हैं क्योंकि एक तिहाई बहुमत चाहिए, वो जुटाना हमारे लिए बिल्कुल मुश्किल नहीं है, 129 देशों का समर्थन चाहिए, लेकिन कठिनाई केवल ये है कि उस पर आने वाला व्यय उन तमाम देशों को देना होगा जो समर्थन कि जो देश 
अपनी भाषा को अधिकृत करवाना चाहता है पूरा व्यय वो वहन करेगा तो हम कल हिंदी को अधिकृत भाषा बनवा दें मैंने तो संसद में कहा था कि 40 करोड़ नहीं 400 करोड़ का भी अगर खर्च होगा तो हम देने को तैयार हैं संयुक्त राष्ट्र में अधिकृत भाषा बनाने को All right, uh, so these are the visuals uh, from uh, the World Hindi Conference uh, that began in Mauritius this morning. The Prime Minister of uh, that country, Praveen Jagannath, uh, inaugurated this conference. And uh, in the beginning of the conference, uh, we saw dignitaries uh, paying tributes to former Prime Minister Atal Bihari Vajpayee at the conference, and they all contributed, uh, lauded his contribution in promoting Hindi language. And we saw very effective speech by. external affairs minister sushma swaraj there at the conference and during her address she stressed on making hindi language the official language at the united nations remember the theme of this conference is a hindi world and indian culture and interestingly for the first time representatives from all the 29 states and union territories of our country are participating in this conference and not just uh, delegates from india but the delegates from all around the world are participating in the conference on to some other news uh, former prime minister atal bihari vajpayee was uh, create, cremated uh, with the uh, full state honors at a smriti sthal in new delhi last evening leaders cutting across the political spectrum foreign dignitaries and thousands of people gathered to pay their tributes to the departed leader the former prime minister passed away on thursday evening at the all india institute of medical sciences following prolonged illness as bugle sounded the last post and uniformed soldiers gave a gun salute the crowd fell silent as former prime minister atal bihari vajpayee's mortal remains were consigned to flames atal bihari vajpayee ji ka parthiv sharir dehik roop se ab wo humse alag ho jayenge vajpayee's foster daughter namita kaul bhattacharya lit the fire se. as cries of atal bihari amar rahe reverberated the air itna gaata hu प्रेसिडेंट रामनाथ कोविंद प्राइम मिनिस्टर नरेंद्र मोदी कांग्रेस प्रेसिडेंट राहुल गांधी एंड फॉर्मर प्राइम मिनिस्टर मनमोहन सिंह वर अमंग द थाउजेंड्स ऑफ पीपल एट द राष्ट्रीय स्मृति स्थल ऑन द बैंक्स ऑफ द यमुना वेयर द बीजेपी पेट्रियाक वाज लेड टू रेस्ट सेवरल फॉरेन डिग्नेटरीज इंक्लूडिंग भूटनीस किंग जिगमे के सरवांगचोक Bangladesh Foreign Minister Abul Hasan Mahmood Ali and Pakistan's Law Minister Ali Zafar were also present as Vajpayee was cremated with full state honors. The gathering included governors, chief ministers, opposition leaders, chiefs of army, navy and air force and a host of other dignitaries who paid their last respects to the former prime minister. It was a sea of white with most mourners dressed in the color of mourning to remember the man who wove together pragmatism and his vision for an inclusive India. Earlier in the day thousands of mourners poured onto the streets of Delhi as Vajpayee's cortege made its way from his home to the BJP headquarters on Deen Dayal Upadhyay Marg and then to the Rashtriya Smriti Sthal. Prime Minister Narendra Modi and BJP President Amit Shah were among those who walked behind the gun carriage decorated with flowers. The crowd was so massive that people spilled over barricades and jostled to get a glimpse of the former prime minister. A sea of people also gathered at the BJP headquarters in the afternoon to catch a glimpse of the BJP stalwart. The Uttar Pradesh government announced that Atal Bihari Vajpayee's ashes will be immersed in rivers in all the districts in the state. Bureau report Rajya Sabha TV
Big story from Pakistan. A former cricketer Imran Khan has been sworn in as the new Prime Minister of Pakistan more than two decades after he entered politics. Imran Khan was a tearful and smiled as he stumbled over some of the words of his oath led by country's President uh, Mehmood Hussain at the President House in Islamabad. Members of the 1992 Cricket World Cup winning team that uh, Khan captain to victory watched the ceremony alongside the senior PTI figures, Army Chief General Kamar Javed Bajwa and other military officials. Indian former cricket and politician Navjot Singh Sidhu was also in attendance. Khan was elected a Prime Minister in a vote at the country's National Assembly on Friday. He was backed by 176 members. His opponent, uh, Pakistan Muslim League Nawaz President uh, Shahbaz Sharif, received 96 votes. On to sports news now, the 18th edition of the Asian Games officially kick off in Indonesian capital Jakarta today and the opening ceremony will begin at 5.30pm India time with the, most of the events scheduled to commence from tomorrow. Around 11,000 athletes from 45 nations will be seen competing in 40 sports and 60 disciplines uh, consisting of 28 Olympic sports, uh, 4 new Olympic sports and 8 non-Olympic sports. Javelin thrower Neeraj Chopra will be India's flag bearer to lead over 500 strong contingent. And in cricket, uh, the third test between India and England uh, starts at uh, Trench uh, Bridge in Nottingham today. The match will begin at uh, 3.30 p.m. And India will aim at redemption against England in this test. It will be Indian team's last chance to save the five-match series after being outplayed in the first two test matches. Remember, India lost to England by 31 runs at Edgbaston and by an innings and 159 runs at the Lords. That's it in this edition of Midday News. Thanks for watching.